Okay. Um, thanks so much for agreeing to uh, to interview with me for my research. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I'll just jump right into it. Um, my research is, is about um, the uh, relationship between digital governance and democracy. Uh, because like throughout the world, obviously, we're seeing like a huge recession of democracy, uh, including in Europe and the United States. Um, but Taiwan seems to be the exception to this. Like Taiwan's democracy is only uh, getting stronger in a lot of the democracy reporting data shows us. Mm -hmm. So I guess my first question is, what role do you think that Taiwan's digital policies play in this? And how significant do you think they were in driving this trend? Mm -hmm. I think universal broadband access and universal healthcare, universal digital competence and media competence in basic education, these are the main motivators uh, for inclusive digital democracy. Uh, and I think we think about democracy as a form of social technology. So it's not a fixed like three bits uploaded every person every four year thing, uh, but rather it's a continuous thing where everybody can participate. It's everyone's business with everyone's help. So I think it's um, not two things like in internet democracy, but rather it's intertwined. Exactly. So what aspects do you think of, of Taiwan's like e-democracy and e-government solutions like uh, radical transparency or these participation tools that you guys have put together? Uh, what do you think of the greatest advantages of this um, of this approach that Taiwan has? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's now so prevalent that I don't think about the e-dash anymore, right? Uh, we, we just say let's mail each other. We, we don't say e-dash mail anymore because that's kind of the default. Uh, we'll, we'll say paper-based mail if it's uh, paper-based mail. Um, and so uh, similarly, uh, we now just say the national petition website or the participation website instead of the e-petition website or the e-participation website. Um, and that shows that it really is inclusive, that people of all the different ages Age groups, especially the people younger than 18 and the people around like 60, 70 years old, uh, they find a lot more uh, to contribute in a day to day fashion uh, to the everyday life, uh, including, as I mentioned, through petitions, but also through participatory budgeting, sandbox applications, presidential hackathon, well, even just calling the toll free number 1922 to contribute to counter pandemic uh, effort uh, and so on. And all these uh, shows that uh, the government works now with the citizens, not just for the citizens. That is the main change. Okay, so it's establishing this sort of like collaborative um, ecosystem mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. citizens can communicate with the government. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so then what do you think, what, what, what kind of like policy groundwork um, do you think is required before you start implementing these kinds of things, these mm -hmm. um, participation mm -hmm. platforms and stuff? I mentioned universal broadband, universal media competence, universal digital competence, uh, and also healthcare since we're still during the pandemic. Uh, and, and these are actually constitutionally protected in time. Okay, interesting. Um, so then how, um, how popular or widely used are these participation tools uh, in Taiwan right now? And are you, like, do you have any policies that are, that you're in? to get them to a wider sector. Uh, I can't hear you anymore. Shall we make another call? Um, Center for the Computation and things like that. Uh, and I noticed that you just started recording, but it's fine. Uh, I've got my local recording has since sent you. Oh, okay, sorry. But um, and so, um, yeah, so, so the point is that it's not directly uh, translatable to citizen engagement uh, if you do not empower the public service to trust the citizens with those uh, digital tools for pro-social communication, right? So uh, what we're uh, getting at with the participation officer network, uh, among other things, is to get a culture of starting a, a wiki survey, right? A crowdsourced agenda setting um, as easy as you would uh, start starting a Google form. Okay, exactly. So do you think that there's a little bit more um, more work to be done here to get the uh, like the civil service and the bureaucrats and the government to really trust these tools a lot more? 
Yeah, certainly. Um, so, of course, we use free software. Uh, Polis is a GPL. Sandstorm, I think, is GPL or something. Uh, and so we make sure that they can actually uh, work to customize uh, to their heart's content if they want to add new functionalities. Uh, and also, we make sure that the public service uh, work with the professional penetration testers, white hat hackers, uh, to make sure that there's no uh, cybersecurity issues when using these tools and so on. Um, and so I think a healthy relationship with the civic tech community and the white hat hackers uh, community that is essential in getting people to trust these tools. Okay, exactly. Um, so do you think that there's um, possibilities for uh, countries in Europe, in North America to sort of replicate the success that Taiwan has had in this if they allocate for universal broadband, healthcare, and these kinds of things? Definitely. I mean, police is from Seattle uh, and participatory budgeting is inspired by, among other things, uh, Consul and Decidim uh, from uh, Madrid and Barcelona. Uh, the petition website uh, is almost an exact um, adaptation uh, of the Better Reykjavik uh, from Iceland uh, and many other things. Uh, and so what we're doing uh, is, in, in some sense, just making sure that uh, the public service trust uh, this um, method of listening at scale without getting tied to any particular form of technology. So they may actually procure new technology when new technology is called for. Uh, and so it's more of a culture change thing rather than a single piece of technology. Um, and so if a similar culture is uh, being um, deliberated in other parts uh, of the world, I'm sure that since this is free software, um, any place probably has their own self-hosting capabilities and their own cybersecurity auditing teams. Exactly, okay. So a lot of it has to do with uh, the political will. More so than uh, the and, technology. Um, and, and also the norm, the, the habit of policy making, because in the public service, uh, what's important is to reduce the risk, right? If you collect far more noise than signal, you're actually increasing the risk. And also the, another interest is to save time. If you collect a lot more uh, controversy uh, and polarization than uh, workable, feasible, um, shared uh, good enough consensus, then you actually waste everybody's time. So without uh, increasing Increasing anyone's risk or wasting anyone's time, the public service is much uh, more willing than to work on the mutual trust part, which is the part we want to get to, right? But you can't trust one to the other. Uh, the three um, axes of uh, reducing risk and saving time and improving trust uh, cannot be traded uh, against each other. Exactly. Okay. Um, and this one, I guess, is is a, a, um, not directly related with the particip participation, but on. Uh, especially in the West on social media and uh, online forums. Uh, they've often become sort of the hosts of very toxic communities that engage uh, maybe in hate speech, traffic in um, conspiracy theories and these kinds of things. Um, so how can a government in collaboration with citizens work to reduce these uh, anti-democratic influences while still maintaining the right of uh, free speech? I mean, I think there is a... Um room for the more antisocial uh, or tension uh, oriented, conflict oriented parts of social media, just like uh, there is a room for the nightlife district, uh, very loud bars um, in the city, right? Um, people go there for entertainment, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, even though it's, you know, selling addictive drinks, private bouncers, very loud music, you have to shout to get heard. Uh, there, there is, of course, a um, population, a, a, a cultural um, need for have such places. Places. What's not uh, good is to try to hold town hall meetings at such places, right? So, <laughs> and what, so what the government should do uh, is to uh, fund uh, and give substantial social sector control to uh, the equivalent of public parks, of uh, public libraries, um, national parks even uh, for this sort of things, right? Uh, and this is what we call digital public infrastructure and uh, is classified since 2016 um, as uh, infrastructure, uh, even though it's nothing concrete, like not made out of concrete, uh, still it provides the digital equivalent of the town hall-like places for people to act in a pro-social manner for deliberative democracy. But we're not banning or chasing down, uh, you know, the end a social corner of social media that's for entertainment that has its role in the society. Exactly, okay. Um, so then my next question is, how do you find this balance between um, uh, 
the, the various actors that work to sort of moderate um, content online, especially like, for example, disinformation and these kinds of things. How has Taiwan sort of like built this balance of uh, uh, civic society, the private owners and the government to, uh, mm. to effectively counter it? Yeah, by creating a strong norm, uh, it's just like counter spam, right? If sufficient amount of people flag things as spam, then organizations such as Spam House has sufficient signals to contextualize each part of the email uh, to kind of find the fingerprints uh, that will then uh, divert further emails from a spammer to people's junk mail folder rather than the inbox. But this doesn't work if any single actor uh, from this multi-stakeholder situation uh, suddenly says, I want to be the intermediary and all your message have to pass through me. That, of, of course, would not work uh, in the email case. Uh, and so I, I think in Taiwan, we have a really vibrant ecosystem. The leading antivirus company, Trend Micro, for example, uh, offers the Fang Jia Daren or the uh, virus buster uh, that scans uh, for scams and um, like um, conspiracy theories also, disinformation packages and so on, uh, because it, it's a general purpose system uh, for flagging and for real-time contextualization. Uh, and uh, also in the private sector, there's the Who's Call, uh, which is a unsolicited caller ID identification app. And they also offer uh, Meiyu Yi, which is a similar service for even in end-to-end -end encrypted channels, they can scan incoming messages and contextualize it. On the social sector, um, there is Gov0 with the Kofax community, like a Wikipedia like community uh, for real-time fact-checking and there's also uh, for example um, the Taiwan Fact Check Center which is by professional journalists uh, providing the service uh, so that the uh, widely spread rumors can be actually investigated upon and again providing the kind of mandatory what we call notice and public notice so on the private sector the uh, companies such as Facebook are strongly pressured by the social norm so that they have to sh uh, show the contextualizer uh, services uh, whenever any Anything, uh, that is trending or goes viral. And so what we found is that if we provide clarification and counter disinformation context uh, within a couple of hours of each viral uh, piece of disinformation, then they tend not to make too much uh, of a negative social impact. This is what we call humor over rumor, uh, the memes uh, to uh, make people kind of laugh uh, as a contextualizer that also helps a lot. Awesome, okay. Um, so my second last question actually is, um, and feel free to speculate as wildly as you want on this one. But how do you um, how do you foresee the relationship between citizens and the state changing as more digital technologies, like for example, uh, cryptocurrency, are adopted that are taking sort of the power away from the state, where they used to have a monopoly over you know currencies and, and commerce mm -hmm. and these kinds of things, and it's being sort of democratized in a, in a new way. I think democracy as a form of technology, as I mentioned in the very beginning, is what I'm uh, seeing. Um, and it's not in the far future. I mean, um, um, for example, the Ethereum community, uh, now that they're uh, under a very strong social pressure to adopt a net zero climate uh, impact uh, transition, right? And that is uh, like changing the, the governance uh, priorities uh, for that particular uh, crypto community. They also um, navigated the Gitcoin uh, experiment pretty well using new forms of uh, funding called quadratic funding, which is then uh, inspired by quadratic voting, which is a new voting system. So democracy is a new form te of technology. It's not some abstract thing, right? It's something that's being experimented uh, in the crypto space as well. And we take um, the um, not yet uh, best, but better practices, or maybe we should call it uh, next practices, uh, and then use it in our um, government uh, functions like the presidential hackathon, the presidential culture award, both uh, has been used in quadratic funding now, uh, sorry, quadratic voting now. Um, and so I think a lot more kind of uh, cross pollination of the democracy as a technology uh, is now happening between the digital spaces and the more traditional uh, state functions. And so I think this is pretty good in the sense that um, this iteration uh, makes people think of government as something that people can fork uh, and also merge back. And so I think this fork and merge relationship is what I have in mind when I think about future, what I call people, public, private partnerships. Okay, awesome. Um, that's actually all of my questions. Uh, you answered them amazingly. It was great. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, excellent. Uh, and we should talk about uh, the recording. Usually I just uh, post it on YouTube under Creative Commons Attribution, if you're okay with that. Yeah, that works perfectly for me, actually. 
Okay, okay, and it will contain your audio, but not your video. It will contain just my video because it's a local recording. Sure, okay. Okay, so excellent. Works. I'll just um, send you the links. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot. Okay, Have cheers. A great day. Bye. Bye. Live long and prosper. Bye. Thank you.